carry these costumes from Outlander. <laughs> and then set this up for us. Everything was hand done, right? Yeah. 10,000 well, costumes? Well, hand done. Hand I mean, it, it, everything was made. So we're not, we're not actually sewing by hand on, a lot of our pieces do have handwork on them, but it would have taken us about 20 years to make the show <laughs> if we'd done it all by hand. But you didn't buy anything off the rack. This yeah. wasn't, you didn't go to J.C. Penney's and say. No, we did not. <laughs> Had there been an 18th century version of J.C. Penney's, I'd have been the first one there on opening day. Um, no, we had to make it all. And, uh, and it, was, um, it was some task. So, 10,000 dresses. 10,000 garments. Costumes and, and the rest of it. Yeah. And I think what's remarkable is, of course, yes, we expect to see the elaborate ball gowns when the women go to Versailles, but when the men go to a whorehouse, they're looking great. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, the, that's the, the beauty and the curse of the 18th century is that, you know, there, there just is no version that's jeans and t-shirts. You know, we, in modern day, we just, you know, we dress up, so we had a jacket, you know. And these guys changed every hour on the hour. I mean, it, our supporting cast has 15 costumes each, you know. It just, every time you see them, they're in some new, highly decorated, you know, outfit. And the men's clothes are at least as complicated as the women's. I mean, the embroidery alone, there, again, there is no store that sells 18th century fabrics. So we had to make them all, so we had a a team of pretty young kids, a couple years out of art school, who've never worked in film and television before, that were suddenly sitting in front of professional embroidery machines, and we were translating embroidery we see on portraits of the 18th century into modern-day technology and creating thousands of yards of fabric from which we made the costumes. It's a remarkable endeavor and an incredible team. But because this story takes place in two time periods, one of them being the 1940s, you borrowed from the couture of the 1940s yes. and inspire some of the choices you make for the fashion in the 1700s, right? Yes. Well, you know, the heart of our story is that it's about time travel and it's about a woman from the 40s who travels back to the 18th century. In season one, she's dressed by others. In season two, she dresses herself and it just seemed essential that, that we see her voice in those choices, and that she would stand in a, a dress salon in Paris, and, and oh, I don't, you know, I don't need all that stuff on me. And um, so we looked to what was happening in the 1940s, and interestingly enough, in that period of fashion, they were looking backwards to the 18th century. So there was this perfect, beautiful moment where we were actually able to sort of recreate what was going on in the 1940s. And Claire was able to create it in the 18th century, and it all just worked very seamlessly and perfectly together. Um, so all of her costumes are very, very reminiscent of the great designers of the 1940s. But the world that she lives in is not. We had to be, for that, for that conceit to work, we had to absolutely make everything else be spot on 18th century, and everybody is decorated and ornamented accordingly. And didn't you take some inspiration, for example, for your 1940s uh, costuming from the stars themselves? For example, was it, I, I think you've told the story in the past of where when we see Claire Mary Frank, she is in an outfit that is fairly similar to her own grandmother's? Well, it's also, interestingly enough, that was another one of those little moments. We have so many of them on Outlander. It's also very similar to the outfit my mother wore when she was married. Oh, okay, that's what it is. You know, but it was also cats because that's what's so remarkable is that, you know, I knew from my own mother's story, and she was one of nine kids. There's five girls in her family. They all got married in the 1940s. I had a slew of wedding pictures. I could go when I did my research. There were very few women in that time who were getting the big or, you know, extravagant gowns that we see today. They went, to, they got a real, you know, they put their best suit on and put a corsage on and went down to City Hall. So that was the place I was going, and then when Kat and I started to really get get into it she came in with her picture of her grandmother in that suit as well so um, there's a lot of shared experiences in this and when you're working with actors of this caliber they are very very integrally and organically involved in the process from start to finish when members of the costume guild or the costume branch of the television academy see this show what what specific things would you like to point out to them say, say Check that out. In other words, let's say, let me give you an example. Let's say you pick one of Katrina's 
dresses from this season and you say, all right, I want you not just to look at that alone, but I want you to see the wink we're making here to Christian Dior two centuries later. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a pretty obvious wink. I mean, we, we <laughs> essentially, you know, Christian Dior designed what is known as the bar suit, and that was the most, it is the most iconic, one of the most iconic pieces of fashion ever in history. And anybody who knows anything about fashion or anything in costume is going to take one look at that and go, that's the bar suit. It is, it is such an important moment in, in, in fashion history that it was almost like I was sort of waving at everybody. I wanted that to be a moment that, that everybody who loves clothing would be able to see and people who work in, in my line of work love clothing or we wouldn't be doing that. And, and, and they will be able to see that in everything you do. You know, the, 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 the beauty of, of what we do and, and who votes in our categories is, is that they understand. They're going to look at our show and they're going to see what we did and they're going to know what it took to get that on screen. Not just us, a lot of other people who are doing period, you know, costumes right now. The rental houses aren't filled with millions of period costumes anymore that we can all go rent. You know, we're all making it. And um, there's there's a there's something about your peer group understanding. Everybody assumes we rent everything. You know, most people don't think that we're going to make everything, but they know. They can look, and they can see what we did, and that is a, a very personal reward when when your peers can see what you've done.